here we are at the Apalutok Ruby Mine in uh, Greenland. And what is exciting here is uh, yesterday we found a vein with uh, nice pollution here in this lake. So uh, since yesterday we spent a lot of time cleaning the area in order to be able to uh, see exactly how the ruby are in, uh, in the rock and understand a little bit better the geology. So I will show you a little bit what we have here. So number one, I want to show you some of the, the best stones we are able to find in this area. So you can see these uh, two rubies, very good red, good clarity and also good size. You can see that the stones are not very flat, so this stone will be able to cut from a good facet stone, cabochon or maybe beads depending on the clarity. But this one at least are high cabochon, maybe facet grade. Good red. Huh? You can see here that uh, rubies here in Greenland are associated with uh, other minerals. Like uh, here you have the amphibole, which is uh, dark or sometimes uh, greenish. You have also fairspar that is uh, white. And you have also mica that is a bit bronzy in color, like here. So let's look at the vein a little bit. So you can see here the ruby rich vein is a this layer that is located between some uh, sapphire ingot right and uh, some knife. So you have this layer that is about two meter wide, and in the area close to the sapphire ingot right, you have some amphibole, some mica, some fairspar, and some ruby. You can see that fine quality rubies are often associated with amphibole because probably the chromium is coming from the amphibole. And when there is a less amphibole, the stone color is going a little bit more pink. So you can see the vein is going following here the contact zone with the sapphire ingot, right? You can see here that you have several pockets with quite large rubies, sometimes with good red color. And just next to that, you have some uh, pink area. So it means uh, the difference between pink and red it depends on the local chromium content in the rock. And uh, this is uh, very often that we have next to each other a red stone and then a pink stone. This is exactly the same, it just depends on the chromium content. So you see the vein is following here, where we have again an area with good production. And here you can see that we have also sometimes some very large stone like uh, this one. So this one is interesting because you can see it's a little bit milky but it's probably around uh, 200 carat. We don't really know exactly what is the weight of the stone, maybe 100, maybe 200, because it's still in the rock, but uh, we'll know when we will extract it. You can see just next to that, you have uh, some uh, good uh, red stone, and this one is only milky. So we'll see, maybe this stone will turn uh, good after heat treatment, but uh, yeah, we have to see that. That's still a, a kind of gamble. And you can see the vein is following here, where you have also again some uh, good uh, red uh, rubies here then here and you have here a kind of eye structure where you had uh, some obviously some good fluid circulation some chromium and also some space for nice crystal to grow like uh, this one this one and this one so the whole structure here where we have rubies we have found a place that is about four to five meter wide now we have totally cleaned the area we'll be able to document in order for geologists to better understand how fine quality rubies are forming here in Apalutok in Greenland and then we will mine it. But this is one of the great interests about uh, doing some exploration during uh, summertime because there is no snow, there is water so we can wash correctly the area and document and learn from every uh, different uh, fine pocket that we found here in Greenland.